Hey guys, Colin Gao, Certified Nutritional Consultant, bringing you guys another talk today. Today, I'm going to be talking about Pandemic 101. Okay, what can you do in the case of a serious worldwide pandemic? These are going to be my top 10 natural antivirals slash antimicrobials and immune system strengtheners. Okay, I'm not claiming that these supplements necessarily combat any particular pandemic. Uh, but this video was inspired by the pandemic of 2019-2020, which will remain unnamed. Um, so let's get into it, folks. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, an overview of the subject. Uh, I'm going to be reading uh, excerpts from medical journal studies uh, on each of these uh, natural compounds, natural supplements, uh, nutrients, vitamins, minerals, uh, herbs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I'm going to be reading medical journal uh, study excerpts, uh, and then I'm going to be talking a little bit about foods, uh, what to eat, what not to eat, um, uh, and just overall general preparedness uh, for, you know, uh, a possible um, situation where there is a pandemic. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so uh, first and foremost, distrust the mainstream media. That's your first step, folks. Okay, so... Um, a lot of us know that the mainstream media is owned by six major corporations, uh, all the mainstream media outlets. Uh, so generally, they have uh, conflicts of interest that cause them to push stories they want to push uh, out of proportion in comparison to other important stories. Uh, so that's number one, distrust the mainstream media. Number two is do your own research, of course, after that. Uh, to figure out what the truth is. Um, you don't want to blindly accept anything, whether it be um, what your parents say, what your religion says, what your TV says. Um, you want to do your own research, okay? That's common sense. Uh, number two, or number three, take it in perspective slash proportion slash context. Okay, so as I said, you know, mainstream media often prefers to... Um, you know, blow certain things out of proportion, uh, particularly pandemics uh, out of proportion. Uh, now, I'm not saying that pandemics are not real. Uh, I do believe that many of these viruses, bacteria, are definitely real things. Um, however, um, and I, I don't, I also don't doubt the fact that people often are dying from uh, pathogenic um, uh, pandemics. Um, but you got to take it in proportion. You got to take it in context and in perspective. Okay. So for instance, um, just based on what people put in their mouths, um, the statistics on, um, basically cancer related deaths attributable to diet, for instance. So this is basically people killing themselves by what they put in their mouths, uh, causing cancer. Um, there's 3,500,000 deaths worldwide per year alone just from that just from what people are putting in their own mouths uh, causing cancer okay that's because 30 to 35 percent of uh, cancers are linked to diet okay uh, also anything i say here check the references below it's all going to be uh, linked in the references below uh, all the references all the are all in the description below all the references to these medical journal studies will be there uh, that study, for instance, was cancer is a preventable disease that requires major lifestyle changes. Uh, that was published in the journal Pharmaceutical Research in 2008. Okay, uh, so they mentioned that as many as 30 to 35% are linked to diet. They're talking about cancer-related deaths. Uh, about 15 to 20% are due to infections, and the remaining percentage are due to other factors like radiation stress, physical activity, environmental pollutants. Uh, they also mentioned that 25 to 30% are due to tobacco. Um, so if you do the math, 10 million people worldwide are expected to be diagno diagnosed with cancer. Uh, 10 million times 0.35, uh, 35% uh, linked to diet, 3,500,000 deaths, okay? Uh, so just putting things in perspective here, that is a lot more deaths, and that's just from one particular disease. Um, there's, you know, 12 million people uh, die of um, heart disease every year, according to Dr. Eric Berg. Uh, so, you know, uh, again, put it in perspective, you know, no virus, no pathogen, no bacteria is ever going to cause 
as many deaths as those uh, among all the other you know conditions and diseases and uh, I mean it would be crazy if, if something like that happened so um, so again got to take it in perspective here um, prepare yourself is the next one um, you don't want to be too conspirified to the point that you don't do any preparation okay um, eat healthily buy a mask you know whether it be you know one of these um, uh, regular like medical masks or whether it be a gas mask or whatever you got to buy um, you should probably prepare with something like that um, make sure you eat healthily uh, stock up on natural medicines okay um, which I'll talk about here uh, seek immediate medical attention if you do uh, contract a particular pathogen that is linked to a pandemic okay legally legally I should say that um, if it were me personally, I would do everything possible naturally before I uh, sought out medical attention. But that's also because I live in the United States, which we spend more on healthcare than any country in the world, and it's not very good. Uh, so, um, yeah. But anyway, this is not an attempt to treat, diagnose, prevent, or cure any disease or condition. Make sure you talk to your doctor before making any changes. Um, yeah. So, um, Anyway, I don't mean to make light of this. I, again, I understand that people um, do die from pandemics. Um, I just want you to take it in context and in perspective um, so you don't panic and, um, you know, trying to educate you on the natural things you can do to empower yourself, you know, so you don't have to panic and worry about this stuff so much uh, and stress about it because that's just going to weaken your immune system further and watching the news going to weaken your immune system further probably and... Um, you know, that's no good. So, um, so let's get into it. Top 10 supplements, uh, I recommend, uh, that are either antiviral or antimicrobial or antibacterial or, uh, or just strengthen your immune system. Uh, okay. So, so first one, uh, astragalus, I'm going to be reading some studies here. Uh, this one is, um, from the journal Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine, uh, published in 2016. The study is entitled Characterization of the Physiological Response Following In Vivo Administration of Astragalus Membranaceous. Membranaceous. Astragalus polysaccharides have demonstrated immunopotentiating properties such as increased murine B cell proliferation and cytokine production. Numerous in vitro studies and limited in vivo studies and clinical trials have demonstrated intriguing indications for the use of AM, uh, astragalus membranaceous, uh, particularly as an immunomodulator uh, to prevent and treat heart disease, nephritis, bacterial infection, and viral illnesses, especially respiratory infections and chronic hepatitis. The most recent 2019-2020 uh, what may be there may be calling a pandemic um, does affect the respiratory tract <clears throat> so uh, so it's good to know that and as an adjunct therapy for cancer HIV and atopic disease several animal studies have shown the ability of astragalus to restore and enhance immunologic function in the cases of either immunosuppression or infection including HSV HIV HBV and viral myocarditis the antiviral and wound healing properties of astragalus are proposed to be indirect via modulation of pro-inflammatory cytokines, including leukocyte and platelet mobilization. Okay, this is from a different study here. Um, this one, I'm not going to give you the title of, I'm just going to give you the DOI, uh, the title and everything. All, all the references, again, will be in the description below. The DOI for this one is 10.3390 slash medicines 5020046. This is from table two of this study, uh, the immunomodulatory functions of astragalus radix and its major constituents. Astragalus, uh, astragalus radix is um, basically a Chinese uh, medicine that is essentially astragalus membranaceous. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, astragalocides, um, biological functions, enhance nonspecific immune response in vivo, 
increase of monocytes, neutrophils, and lymphocyte counts in vivo, suppressed proliferation of various cancer cell types in vitro, polysaccharides from astragalus, T cell and B cell proliferation, cytokine upregulation, uh, regulation of GM-CSF and NO productions and modulation of AK AKT pathway, prolonged cancer patient's lifespan, enhance IgM antibody production. Okay, you need to produce antibodies to kill pathogens. Uh, that was in vivo, that last one there. Um, the prolonged cancer patient's lifespan was in vivo. Um, the flavonoids from astragalus suppress NO and chronic inflammatory mediator release in vitro, inhibit LPS, sim, uh, inhibit LPS stimulated cytokine production in bone marrow derived dendritic cells in vitro, prolong cancer patients lifespan in vivo, stimulate lymphocyte proliferation in, vi in vitro. Okay. Uh, one more on astragalus. This is a study entitled, The Known Immunologically Active Components of Astragalus Account for Only a Small Proportion of the Immunological Adjuvant Activity When Combined with Conjugate Vaccines. Okay, again, they generally blow out of proportion, uh, these pandemics, and then, of course, you got to see the pattern. Every year, they're seeing every year, every couple of years, there always seems to be some type of pandemic. You know, you should start to, to notice this pattern. Uh, and then shortly after, there's talk of a vaccine. Um, so, you know, there's always, you should always question, you know, uh, is maybe a pharmaceutical company having some role here uh, as far as, um, you know, perpetrating something in order to basically make more vaccine profits in order to mandate vaccines and things like this. Um, I don't want to say too much because, you know, that's all I'm going to say. But um, anyway, so what they're basically saying here, the 95% ethanol extract, uh, this, is, this study is from 2011, the 95% ethanol extract of astragalus has been demonstrated to have potent activity as an immunological adjuvant when administered with vaccines of various types. So if you're going to get a vaccine for a pandemic, which I personally would never do, um, then... Um, you should probably, maybe possibly, take some astragalus with it. You know, talk to your doctor before making any changes, but it might be a good idea to take astragalus based on this study as an adjuvant with a vaccine. Uh, might make it more effective. Um, uh, moving on to silver, uh, number two here in my top 10 supplements. Uh, this one, uh, again, I'm get, just going to give you the DOI. It's 10 point three three nine zero slash molecules one six one zero eight eight nine four uh this is from table one of the study uh antiviral metal nanoparticles okay a lot of this information is going to be on viruses um but i will read um as i finish some of these i'm going to go back over some of these again and just briefly talk about um you know a couple other benefits of all these things um, beyond what I'm telling you throughout all these medical journal studies. I'm going to get the medical journal studies out of the way first and then just give you a really, really brief uh, couple of the tidbits about each of these and then I'm going to move on. Um, but a lot of pandemics are caused by viruses, so that's why I'm focusing on viruses here. Uh, so, anyway, antiviral metal nanoparticles. Uh, the virus is HIV-1, um, PVP-coated silver nanoparticles, 1 to 10 nanometers. Mechanism of action, interaction with GP120. Okay, these are, again, antiviral metal nanoparticles. Herpes simplex virus type 1, MES-coated silver and gold nanoparticles, 4 nanometers. Competition, the mechanism of action against the virus is competition for the binding of the virus to the cell. Uh, respiratory syncytial virus, PVP-coated silver nanoparticles, 69 nanometers, plus or minus 3 nanometers. 
Mechanism of action, interference with viral attachment. Monkeypox virus, silver nanoparticles, and polysaccharide-coated silver nanoparticles, 10 to 80 nanometers. Mechanism of action, block of virus host cell binding and penetration. Uh, let's see. Influenza virus, sialic acid, functionalized, oh, that's gold, never mind. Um, Tacaribe virus, also known as TCRV. Silver nanoparticles and polysaccharide coated silver nanoparticles, 10 nanometers. Mechanism, mechanism of action, inactivation of virus particles prior to entry. Hepatitis B virus, silver nanoparticles, 10 to 50 nanometers. Mechanism of action, interaction with double-stranded DNA and or binding with viral particles. Okay, these are all referenced. Uh, next study on silver. Uh, now, this is a study where I'm showing the negative um, or the opposite um, in order to legally present um, medical information uh, properly and legally and um, you have a liability to basically um, show a balance of the research. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with this study. Um, this is a study uh, basically that shows that silver does not inhibit uh, any viruses. So um, spectrum of antimicrobial activity associated with ionic colloidal silver. That's the title of the study. This is from the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine, 2013. Uh, results, no viral growth inhibition was observed with any strains tested. Okay. So again, I'm just showing the balance of the research there. Uh, moving on to number three, oregano oil. Uh, this is from a study titled Antimicrobial Properties of Plant Essential Oils Against Human Pathogens and Their Mode of Action, an Updated Review. Antiviral Effects of Essential Oils. From our literature survey, it is evident that many essential oils possess antiviral properties against many DNA and RNA viruses, such as herpes simplex virus type 1 and type 2, dengue or dengu, however you want to pronounce it, virus type 2, uh, Junin virus, influenza virus, adenovirus type 3, poliovirus, and Coxsackie virus, B1. The oregano and clove essential oils also exhibited strong antiviral activity against several non-enveloped RNA and DNA viruses, such as adenovirus type 3, poliovirus, and Coxsackie virus, B1. Okay, so this is not just talking about uh, oregano oil, it's also talking about essential oils in general. Uh, that's why it may possibly be beneficial to use essential oils to strengthen your immune system and to uh, mitigate the spread of germs. Um, you can apply essential oils, um, you know, uh, right here if you dilute them. Um, so you're breathing them in or on your chest or you could put them on your uh, feet or, um, you know, put them on an essential oil bracelet. Um, I, I sell essential oil bracelets, uh, diffuser bracelets on, on my website. Uh, you can check out colongaucnc.wixsite.com slash colongaucnc. Um, I sell supplements and uh, necklaces and bracelets and all kinds of things. Um, anyway, um, so, you know, essential oils um, uh, are, are important, I would say. Um, anyway, so beyond that, um, next one. Um, uh, moving on to olive leaf extract. Okay, so this is from the journal Antiviral Research, 2005. Uh, the study is entitled, The Olive Leaf Extract Exhibits Antiviral Activity Against Viral Hemorrhagic Septicemia Rhabdovirus. Um, okay, I don't even need to read that one because the title says it all. Okay, so next one. Um, this one, the study is entitled Discovery of Small Molecule HIV-1 Fusion and Integrase Inhibitors, Oliropine and Hydroxytyrosol Fusion Inhibition. The study was published in 2009. The abstract says, starts with, uh, we have identified oliropine and hydroxytyrosol as a unique class of HIV-1 inhibitors from olive leaf extracts 
effective against viral fusion and integration. Okay, another study on olive leaf. Uh, this is from a study entitled Oleropine in Olive and Its Pharmacological Effects. In a U.S. patent, it has been claimed that oleropine has potent antiviral activities against herpes, mononucleosis, hepatitis virus, rotavirus, bovine, rhinovirus, canine, parvovirus, and feline leukemia virus. Oleropine is a natural phytochemical that exists in olive leaf extract, folks. Okay, so just mentioning that. Studies have also shown that oleropine exhibits a significant antiviral activity against respiratory syncytial virus and parainfluenza type 3 virus. There is also one anecdotal report that olive leaf extracts augment the activity of the HIV-RT inhibitor 3, uh, 3TC. The olive leaf extracts were investigated for their antiviral activity against viral hemorrhagic septicemia virus. VHSV, a salmonid or abdovirus, and against HIV-1 infection and replication. Cell-to-cell -cell transmission of HIV was inhibited in a dose-dependent manner with EC50, S, uh, blah, 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 and HIV replication was inhibited in an in vitro exp <clears throat> experiment. Um... Moving on to number five, vitamins A, C, E, D, zinc, and selenium. Okay. Um, this was published in the journal Nutrients in 2018. Um, the DOI is 10.3390 slash NU10101531. This is from table one of this study, overview of key roles played by select micronutrients in the immune system. Effective antioxidant, uh, actually, sorry, so micronutrient slash role, vitamin C, okay, effective antioxidant that protects against ROS. ROS is reactive oxygen species, also known as free radicals um, that cause oxidation and DNA damage and damage to your cells and aging and all kinds of things. So effective antioxidant that protects against ROS and RNS produced when pathogens are killed by immune cells. Uh, again, still on vitamin C. Regenerates other important antioxidants, stimulates production, function, and movement of leukocytes, example neutrophils, lymphocytes, phagocytes. Has roles in antimicrobial and natural killer cell activities and chemotaxis. Involved in apoptosis and clearance of spent neutrophils from sites of infection by macrophages. That, that's all basically the innate immunity uh, effects of vitamin C. Uh, as far as the adaptive immunity effects of vitamin C. Can increase serum levels of antibodies. Has roles in lymphocyte differentiation and proliferation. Alright, so now let's talk about vitamin D. Uh, same, this is all, same study. Vitamin D, uh, vitamin D receptor expressed in innate immune cells, example monocytes, macrophages, dendritic cells, increases the differentiation of monocytes to macrophages, stimulates immune cell proliferation and cytokine production, and helps protect against infection caused by pathogens. 125-dihydroxyvitamin uh, D3, the active form of vitamin D, regulates the antimicrobial proteins Catholicidin cal and defensin, which can directly kill pathogens, especially bacteria. Uh, those were all the innate immunity benefits of vitamin D. Uh, the adaptive immunity benefits are mainly inhibitory effect in adaptive immunity. For example, 125-dihydroxyvitamin D3 suppresses antibody production by B cells and inhibits T cell proliferation. I just realized I forgot to put my microphone a little bit closer to me for this video because I did a video prior to this. I had to move it around. Oh, well, the audio should still be decent, but probably not as good as all my other videos, but it's all good. Still have a decent mic. Uh, just thought I'd mention that. Rambling now. Um, vitamin A helps maintain structural and functional integrity of mucosal cells in innate barriers. Example, skin, respiratory tract, etc. Important for normal functioning of innate immune cells, example, natural killer cells, macrophages, uh, neutrophils. 
Uh, those were all the innate immunity benefits as far as the adaptive immunity. Uh, necessary for proper functioning of T and B lymphocytes and thus for generation of antibody responses to antigen. Involved in development and differentiation of Th1 and Th2 cells and supports Th2 anti-inflammatory response. You need a good balance between Th1 and Th2. Um, some people theorize that the um, hygiene, uh, I think the hygiene hypothesis uh, theorizes that we have a Th1, Th2 imbalance that's basically because our food is too sanitized uh, that's just a possibility um, if you have an imbalance between th1 and th2 you may have allergies or you may have chronic infections uh, so you want a good balance there um, so anyway um, vitamin e um, enhances interleukin 2 production and natural killer cell cytotoxic activity uh, important fat soluble antioxidant um, those are the uh, innate immunity benefits, the adaptive immunity benefits, enhances T cell mediated functions and lymphocyte proliferation, optimizes and enhances Th1 and suppresses Th2 response. I would say it's probably more common that people have an overactivity of Th2 and an underactivity of Th1. Um, so the fact that vitamin E optimizes and enhances Th1, that's generally probably a good thing. Um, again, this is all still the same study. Uh, moving on to zinc, um, helps modulate uh, helps modulate cytokine release and induces proliferation of CD8 um, T cells. Helps maintain skin and mucosal membrane integrity. Those are the innate immunity benefits. The adaptive immunity benefits are central role in cellular growth and differentiation of immune cells that have a rapid differentiation and turnover. Essential for intracellular binding of tyrosine kinase to T cell receptors re required for T lymphocyte development and activation uh, and supports Th1 response. Uh, last but not least here, selenium. Selenoproteins are important for the antioxidant host defense system affecting leukocyte and natural killer cell function. Uh, that's the innate immunity benefit. Um, the adaptive immunity, immunity benefit is uh, involved in T lymphocyte proliferation, has roles in the humoral system. Example, immunoglobulin production. <coughs> Sometimes I forget to grab water for these talks too. Um, uh, next one is elderberry. Okay, number six. Uh, so this study is entitled Elderberry Supplementation Reduces Cold Duration and Symptoms in Air Travelers, a Randomized, Double-Blind, Placebo-Controlled uh, Clinical Trial. Black elderberries, for example, are, black elderberries, for example, are well known to be supportive agents against common cold and flu-like symptoms and have been used for centuries. Interestingly, a non-travel-related clinical trial just revealed that a combination of echinacea herb and root extract supplemented with elderberry can be as effective as the conventional antiviral medicine aceltamivir for the early treatment of influenza. Okay, echinacea is one of my other ones here, so um, good stuff. Elderberries have shown antibacterial and antiviral activities in vitro, in case you don't know, in vitro means in a petri dish. Uh, petri dish, in vivo means in the body. Okay. Two clinical trials using a liquid elderberry extract, sambucol, uh, sambucol, whatever, um, showed a reduction in symptoms and duration of influenza infection. A pilot trial with elderberry extract lozenges also confirmed a beneficial effect on severity and duration of cold and flu-like symptoms. In recent times, elderberry has gained popularity in research and the wider community due to its reported antioxidant, anti-diabetic, anti-inflammatory, and immunomodulating, as well as antidepressant properties. I was unaware of elderberry's antidepressant properties and anti-diabetic properties, so that is interesting. Um, next one here, I think we're moving on to, yep, uh, andrographis, okay? This study is entitled Experimental and Clinical Pharmacology of Andrographis Paniculata, 
and its major bioactive phytoconstituent andrographolide. Immunomodulatory effect. Increase antibody production, decrease delayed type hypersensitivity response, increase proliferation of human peripheral blood lymphocytes, uh, and key cytokines and the expression. I don't know what that means. It's bad grammar, but it says key, cyto key cytokines and the expression. That's some other separate benefit. Um, I guess they're talking about the expression of cytokines. I suppose they just left off the rest of it. Um, antiviral effects, decrease herpes simplex virus, human immunodeficiency virus, flaviviruses and pestiviruses, and dengue virus or dengue virus. I'm not sure how to pr pronounce that one, um, but that is a virus that I'm familiar with. I've done a video uh, before that mentioned dengue virus. Um, uh, check the link in the description below if you want for that. Actually, I'm not going to put that below because I don't want to associate myself with certain things. Uh, I'm not going to say any more. There's been some censor censorship of things. We'll just leave it at that. Um, Andrographis. This is a different study on Andrographis. The study is titled Andrographis paniculata. A review of ethnobotany, phytochemistry, and pharmacology. Although they reported antiviral activity against limited viruses such as dengue virus serotype 1, human papillomavirus type 16, herpes simplex virus type 1, influenza A virus, and HIV, their findings were very encouraging and noteworthy considering the life-threatening role of these viruses in human community. Okay. Uh, mushrooms, number eight. Um, this study is called The Pharmacological Potential of Mushrooms. Small molecular compounds with antiviral activities. Several triterpenes from Ganoderma lucidum, that's Rishi, um, are active as antiviral agents against human immunodeficiency virus type 1. Ganodermidiol, lucid, ganodermidiol lucididiol, and aplanoxidic acid, isolated from G. fiferi, but also known from other Ganoderma species, possess in vitro antiviral activity against influenza virus type A. Further, ganodermidiol is active against herpes simplex virus type 1. In vitro antiviral activity against influenza viruses type A and B was demonstrated for mycelial extracts of Cunaromyces mutabilis. That mushroom I have never heard of. I don't know what that mushroom is. I don't know what the common name of that mushroom is. Uh, but anyway, demonstrated uh, for extracts of that. Uh, extracts and two isolated phenolic compounds from in, in, uh, Inonatus hispidus, that's chaga, um, and ergosterol peroxide present in several mushrooms. The antiviral activity of Colibia maculata is caused by purine derivatives. Um, Water-soluble lignans isolated from Inonatus obliquus, that's, again, that's chaga, uh, inhibited HIV protease with an IC50 value of 2.5 uh, nanograms, I think that's nanograms per milliliter. Um, Anti-HIV activities were reported, uh, blah, blah, blah. Sulfated lentinin from L. idotes, that is a common one. I, I just forget the name. Um, that's a, a common medicinal mushroom that's definitely found in health food stores. I just forget which one. Uh, completely prevented HIV-induced cytopathic effect. The protein-bound polysaccharides PSK and PSP from Trimedes versicolor, that is turkey tail uh, mushroom, were also found to have an antiviral effect on HIV and cytomegalovirus in vitro. Okay, again, remember, I'm going to be going through other benefits of these really quickly besides their antiviral properties uh, as soon as I'm done with this, uh, and then I'm going to move on to the other stuff. Um, 
Antimicrobial Properties of Fomatopsis officinalis in the Light of Its Bioactive Metabolites, a Review. Okay, this is a different study. That was the title of that study. Um, just there. Uh, the, that's the title of this other study now I'm talking about. Direct antiviral activity in HFF cells is, re is reported by F. officinalis versus cowpox and vaccinia virus. In case you don't know, uh, Fomatopsis officinalis uh, is also known by the common name Agaricon. Uh, Agaricon is not the, um, it's not really the common name, that's the name of a product, um, but I would say in the health food store nutrition industry, um, that, that mushroom is known as Agaricon. Um, one to two percent extract from F. officinalis is able to inhibit virus-induced cellular, cellular damage by 50 percent. Uh... A concentration of 1 to 10 to the 6th power. Diluted crude extract was reported as still effective against pathologically relevant virus of influenza A, influenza B, and herpes. Okay, that's an extremely diluted dose of agaricon. Selectivity index indicated extremely high activity uh, of that. Antiviral activity against bird influenza, H5N1, and human influenza, H3N2, is also reported by Tepliakova et al. by applying F. officinalis aqueous extract. Okay. Next study is going to be on echinacea, number nine. Now, I could ramble about my own knowledge about these things, but unfortunately, you know, I need to back up everything. It, it's all got to be referenced. Um, so, you know, I'm live to the entire world, so this has to be as legal as possible. Um, so I can't just say all the other things that I know about these things, because then I'm probably going to have to reference it below, and I don't want to do all that freaking work. I already do all that work all the time anyway. So, um, anyway. This is from the journal Pharmaceuticals Basel. Okay, the study is uh, 2011. The study is titled Echinacea, a source of potent antivirals for respiratory virus infections. Extracts of Echinacea species have been used traditionally in North America for the control of symptoms of colds, influenza, and other diseases, and some of them have become very popular as herbal medicines. Recent studies have revealed that preparations derived from certain species and plant parts, but not all of them, possess potent antiviral activities at non-cytotoxic concentrations, particularly against membrane-containing viruses. Thus, all strains of human and avian influenza viruses tested, as well as herpes simplex virus, respiratory syncytial virus, and rhinoviruses, were very sensitive to a standardized echinacea purpurea preparation. Uh, berberine slash golden seal. Okay, berberine is, is a very bitter alkaloid that's yellow in color that um, is found in Oregon grape root, golden seal, uh, um, barberry, bearberry, uh, I believe. Um, pretty sure it's in both of those. Uh, and then um, probably one or two other herbs. I forget what else, but um, those are some of the main ones. Uh, so anyway... Uh, this is from the journal, uh, it's either China or Chinese, uh, I believe it's Chinese Journal of Integrative Medicine, 2011. This study is entitled, In Vivo and In Vitro Antiviral Effects of Berberine on Influenza Virus. Berberine showed inhibitory effects on cytopathogenic effects. Uh, the grammar there is off, probably because this is done by Chinese researchers, but just ignore it. I'm going to read it again. Berberine showed inhibitory effects on cytopathogenic effects and neuraminidase activity of virus with the therapeutic index 9.69. In vivo, berberine decreased mice mortality from 90% to 55%, reduced virus titers in the lungs on day 2 post-infection. Conclusions. Berberine exhibited antiviral effects on the influenza virus both in vitro and in vivo. This is from the journal Archives Virology, 
2010, anti-herpes simplex virus effects of berberine from Coptis rhizoma, a major component of a Chinese herbal medicine, Ching Wei San. Okay. Uh, the abstract says, berberine may interfere with the viral replication cycle after virus penetration and no later than the viral DNA synthesis step and its activities were not affected by the preparation processes. Berberine, the natural plants that contain this component, including Coptis rhizome and Ching Wei San, have all shown anti-HSV effects. Uh, this study is entitled Antiviral Activity of Berberine and Related Compounds Against Human Cytomegalovirus. This is from 2007. The anti-HCMV activity <clears throat> of one was equivalent to that of Ganciclovir. That's a prescription antiviral. Okay, uh, that's uh, that's it on the medical journal studies. I can stop reading all that stuff to you now. Um, uh, but I will go over real quick now um, a couple of the other benefits. Um, um, you know, and, and this is from actually a, a, a protocol that I have on my website. Um, this is from my immunity protocol. Um, uh, if you again, if you want to check that out, colingaucnc.wixsite.com slash colingaucnc slash articles and protocols. <coughs> All those are available there. Uh, astragalus is an immunomodulator, uh, anti-aging, adrenal health, kidney health, energy, uh, it's known for. Um, Andrographis, uh, just kind of bouncing around here. Uh, Anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antimicrobial, antiprotozoa, antioxidant, blood sugar, uh, olive leaf uh, is also antifungal, antibacterial, heart health, blood pressure, blood sugar. Uh, I'm being vague with these things, again, because it's a legal thing. Um, but olive leaf has been shown to slow viral shedding, budding, and assembly, and replication. Uh, I'm also going to mention a few other things besides these, by the way. Um, other options that are good for your immune system besides these top 10 and I'm just gonna like read them off I'm not gonna talk about them um, elderberry um, besides being antiviral uh, it also is a febrifuge febrifuge in herbal medicine it's an herbal term that means uh, something that lowers fever um, it's also decongestant um, tastes good um, Uh, golden seal is uh, not only antiviral, um, it's also antibacterial, antifungal, antiprotozoa. Antiprotozoa mean, means antiparasitic. Uh, blood sugar, heart health, anti-inflammatory, uh, etc. Uh, silver is antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial, and antiprotozoa. Uh, good for ear, nose, throat, and eye infections. Oregano oil is antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral, antiprotozoa. All right, so those are some, some things there. And just some other great options. And before I talk about foods, um, other great options besides these just for, you know, immune modulation or immune strengthening or antimicrobial properties. Um, or other effects uh, on the immune system uh, are pre, pro, and postbiotics. Again, I'm reading now. I'm reading off a different article I wrote um, that is also on my website. Um, pre, pro, and postbiotics: uh, shilajit, colostrum, or IgG, cat's claw, licorice, marshmallow. Uh, licorice and marshmallow are, are uh, antiviral. Uh, licorice is antiviral. Uh, licorice and marshmallow would also be known as vulneraries in, in herbal medicine, which is basically a, a term that means a wound healer. Um, but uh, they're great for the lungs and respiratory tract because they are high in mucilage. Um, so they're great especially for dry coughs, dry throats, things like that. Um, a lot of these pandemic pathogens um, cause respiratory infections. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to mention a number of other respiratory herbs uh, in a second here. 
Um, anyway, other great options, mucolase, that's an enzyme that helps break down mucus. Uh, Oslococcinum, that is a uh, homeopathic remedy um, uh, that is marketed, I believe, for the flu. Um, I, I've, yeah, anyway. Um, garlic, uh, garlic, grapefruit seed extract, um, lomatium or lomatium, uh, NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine. Uh, N-acetylcysteine can possibly be beneficial for blood sugar, uh, possibly for PCOS, um, you know, possibly for uh, cleansing the respiratory tract, cleansing the liver, uh, preventing, uh, not preventing, uh, but uh, acetaminophen toxicity. Um, it, it's been used for, um, it's been used for so many things. Asthma, they used to add it to in inhalers for asthma. Um, it thins out mucus, boosts the immune system, boosts glutathione, antioxidant, has many, many benefits. Um, anyway, uh, so Lomatium, uh, NAC, Pleurisy, Whorehound, Mullein, Elecampane, Yerba Santa, Thyme, Eucalyptus, Wild Cherry Bark, Black Seed Oil, all those I just said, those are pretty much all respiratory herbs, you know, whether it be sinuses or lungs, um, those are all beneficial, um, uh, a few others, lysine and burdock. Lysine uh, helps to kind of occupy receptor sites where viruses like to spread through. Um, so lysine can possibly be beneficial. Uh, and burdock, burdock's good lymphatic cleanser. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, what else? Okay, so foods. Um, so what else do you want to do if there is some type of pandemic? Um, you want to reduce processed and refined foods, obviously, because they're going to be generally low in nutrients and high in sugar and high in the glycemic index. Okay. And they're just junk foods. They're not good for you. And they're going to lower your immune system and they're not going to help you. Okay. You also want to reduce chocolate and nuts, uh, uh particularly peanuts, but pretty much any nuts, uh, and chocolate. Uh, however, it is beneficial to consume Brazil nuts uh, for uh, the immune system because of the high selenium content. Um, but generally, you want to reduce um, chocolate and nuts because of the high arginine. Arginine is an amino acid um, that could possibly contribute to the spreading of viruses because, um, because it would outcompete lysine if you have high amounts of arginine. And again, lysine is, is uh, important to prevent the, the, the spread of viruses. Um, not prevent, but important to help, you know, uh, occupy the receptor sites where viruses spread through. Um, so arginine and lysine compete for the same receptor sites. So that's why that's the case. Um, chocolate and nuts are high in arginine. Um, you want to reduce iron intake, okay? Because one of the first things uh, that happens when you... Uh, get a cold or some type of infection is your body starts to take all the iron and sequester it into storage to prevent the pathogen from utilizing the iron because iron is a key growth nutrient for life in general whether it be bacteria or uh, or, or other pathogens uh, or just life in general they, that's why they have thought about um, uh, adding iron to the oceans in areas of the ocean where there's very little life um, because it's a, a, a rate limiting factor for growth and life. Uh, so it's a very important nutrient. So reducing that will help um, reduce the ability of the pathogen to use iron to grow. Um, so uh, you also want to reduce dairy, meat, and animal foods um, and any animal flesh if, uh, because of the fact that these are very inflammatory foods and very mucus forming foods in general. Um, obviously, if you have a respiratory infection, um, uh, you may have an excessive production of mucus and you don't want even more mucus um, to clog up all your lymphatic system and your, you know, your whole body. Um, so you want to reduce those. Um, also consider that's pretty much it on, well, actually I'm going to tell you what foods to eat. Uh, and then other than that, try nasal sprays, essential oils, ear oils, and hand washing. Those are all important precautions uh, you can take that uh, may possibly reduce the spread of germs. Um, and then uh, as far as foods that you should be eating, you should eat mushrooms, garlic, onions, ginger, peppers, fermented foods, manuka honey, citrus fruits, seaweed, coconut, Brazil nuts, and nutritional yeast. 
Again, I'm reading from my own article here on this one. Uh, the reason uh, you want to eat peppers is because they're the highest source of vitamin C in nature. Uh, obviously, the reason you want to eat fermented foods is because of the beneficial bacteria, the probiotics, the, the prebiotics, the postbiotics in there. You know, 70% of your immune system is in the gut. Um, so, obviously, that's pretty important. Um, I mentioned coconut to eat because of the fact that it does have uh, anti um, antiviral and antifungal properties. Um, and then, uh, yeah, other than that, should you come down with any serious virus, um, I generally will recommend taking a lot more than what the bottle recommends just to be safe. Uh, if you come down with some serious thing, um, however, um, you know, so, so you might need to triple, quadruple, quintuple, or sextuple the recommended doses. Um, however, make sure you talk to your doctor before making any changes or, or doing that uh, and or set up a consultation with me um, and I can guide you on that because you don't want to just haphazardly just take high doses. I don't know your situation um, or your age or whatnot, so you want to you know consider that. Uh, other than that, again, seek immediate medical attention um, if necessary, okay? You shouldn't be relying on this video solely for your um, you know, immune purposes. Um, again, me personally, I would do everything possible naturally I could before I mess around with any conventional allopathic medical route. Um, but that's also again, because, you know, I live in the United States, which again, we spend more on healthcare than any country in the world and it's not very good. Um, so there's that. Um, anyway, stay safe, be well. Uh, appreciate you watching my videos. Appreciate the support. Um, that's about it. Um, if you'd like a consultation, hit me up at colingowcnc at gmail.com. I will put the uh, link in the description below. Uh, also, if you want to read um, basically uh, my article that is sort of like uh, the written version of this talk, um, check out um, the link here. Uh, this is my website, colingowcnc.wixsite.com slash colingowcnc slash articles and protocols. That'll take you to the page where I have articles and protocols. If you just want to go to the home page uh, and see, you know, other things on my website, you know, about me or, or uh, if you want to check out the supplements I sell, I have an online supplement store. Um, I have my own supplement. Um, I also sell bracelets and necklaces, as I mentioned. Um, and I also sell t-shirts. It's all cool stuff, all health oriented. Um, so, um, if you want to go to just the homepage, then just chop off the articles and protocols part of this, uh, web address, uh, and just go to colingowcnc.wixsite.com slash colingowcnc. And you can get all that cool stuff and information and check it out. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, been Colin Gow CNC. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. As always, rise and supercharge your immune system.